cannon of fire, solar storm slams into Earth today or tomorrow, the CME produced by the G5 class solar flare and a solar tsunami coming. This is the latest in space weather. The geomagnetic storm watch for the next three days. Minor G1 class geomagnetic storms likely according to NOAA forecasters. The action could begin later today, July 21st. When a slow-moving CME is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field, it was hurled into space by solar eruption July 15. Forecasters believe a high-speed stream of solar wind is following close behind the CME, and its arrival will be today or tomorrow, July 22nd, could amplify any storm the CME creates, prolonging the unrest through July 23rd aurora alerts. And also, sunspot AR3 060 solar tsunami and CME sunspot 3060 exploded during the early hours today producing a C5 class solar flare and a solar tsunami the tsunamis so this is besides the C the G1 class we also have a C5 class so the tsunami is the shadowy shock wave seen racing around away from the uh, blast site in this extreme ultraviolet movie from NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory. Soon after the explosion, the U.S. Air Force reported a Type II solar radio burst, a natural form of radio noise produced by shock waves in the leading edge of the CME. This means we can expect a CME to emerge from the blast site. And indeed, chronographs, chronographs on board the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, may have already seen the CME. It's in the preliminary movie report recorded during the hours immediately after the blast. The images captured by Soho are complicated. They appear to show multiple overlapping CMEs. NOAA analysts, analysts are working to now determine which, if any, are headed for Earth. So we have to stay tuned for updates. So there's multiple blasts heading for us. Um, Let's see what happens. Now, despite the alarming name, the storm is set to be mild, they say. Solar winds from the snapping of gigantic canyon of fire filaments on the sun set to slam into Earth today, tomorrow, triggering the weak G1 geomagnetic storm. Sun watchers first spotted solar filaments as dark, thread-like lines against the sun's bright background July 12. These are the G1, but we have the C5 coming in as well. Then on July 15, a filament that had snaked its way down our star's northern hemisphere erupted, carving out a roughly 238,880-mile-long and 12,400-mile-deep canyon of fire on the sun's surface, belching solar material right towards our Earth. The solar filaments are huge arcs of electrified gas or plasma. They're worming their way through the sun's atmosphere according to the whims of the star's powerful magnetic field, these giant magnetic tubes can hold huge masses of plasma above the sun's surface. They're also very unstable, and once they collapse, they can launch explosive jets of solar wind called coronal mass ejection, CMEs, and they barrel towards our Earth. This is what happening in this case. The long snake-like filament cartwheeled its way off the sun in a stunning ballet, ballet Tamitha Skov, space weather physicist, wrote on Twitter following the eruption, and she said the magnetic orientation of the Earth-directed solar storm is going to be tough to predict. G2 level, possibly G3, conditions may occur if the magnetic field of this storm is oriented southwards. G2 and G3 storms are ones that are considered moderate and strong, respectively. The CME expected ejected by the filaments collapse should slam into Earth today or tomorrow. Uh, this is today, the, the July 15 um, eruption. But the uh, yesterday's eruption is coming tomorrow. Now, uh, the CME ejection of the... So there's multiple uh, flares uh, coming at us. Now, so the CME ejection of the filament collapse should slam into Earth today or tomorrow. This is concerning the July 15 eruption. On planets that have strong magnetic fields like ours, our magnetic field absorbs the barrage of solar debris from CMEs, triggering powerful geomagnetic storms, and we'll have powerful auroras on North and uh, South Pole. 
During these storms, the Earth's magnetic field gets compressed slightly by the waves of highly energetic particles, which trickle down magnetic field lines near the poles, and they agitate molecules in the atmosphere, releasing energy in the form of light to create colorful auroras similar to the ones that make up the northern and southern lights. So thankfully, the storm coming from this filament uh, classified as G1 solar storm has potential to cause fluctuations in power grids and impact some satellite functions, including those from mobile devices and GPS systems, but not dramatically. It will also bring the aurora as far south as Michigan and Maine, so you, you there can see it. Now, more extreme geomagnetic storms can disrupt our planet's magnetic field, powerful enough to send satellites tumbling to Earth. As reported, um, what happened uh, a little while ago with the uh, 40 uh, Starlink satellites uh, that Elon Musk put up. Now, eruption debris from CMEs usually takes around 15 to 18 hours to reach Earth, according to NOAA, Space Weather Prediction Center, but it can, like this one, move slower and take longer to arrive. This storm comes as the sun climbs into its most active phase of its roughly 11-year-long solar cycle, it is the second solar storm to have hit Earth in 24 hours. And we're going to have another one tomorrow. So that'll be the third uh, in, well, over 24 hours. Now, astronomers have known since 1775 that solar activity rises and falls in cycles. But recently, the sun has been more active than expected, with nearly double the sunspots appearances predicted by NOAA. The sun's activity is projected to st steadily climb for the next few years, reaching an overall maximum in 2025 before decreasing again. A paper published July 20th in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics proposed a new model for the sun's activity by separately counting sunspots in each hemisphere, a method the paper's researchers argue could be used to make more accurate solar forecasts. Scientists think the largest storm the solar storm ever witnessed during contemporary history was the 1859 Carrington event, which released roughly the same energy as 10 billion one mega, uh, watt, uh, megaton atomic bombs. After slamming into Earth, the powerful stream of solar particles fried telegraph systems all over the world and caused auroras brighter than the light of the full moon to appear as far south as the Caribbean. If a similar event were to happen today, scientists warn us, it would cause trillions of dollars in damage and trigger widespread blackouts, much like the 1989 solar storm that released billion ton plume of plasma causing blackouts across the entire Canadian province of Quebec, according to NASA reports. This is by Ben Turner on Live Science. Now, concerning the um, G1 class, the G, the, um, Sorry, the, the C5 class that's coming from the bigger uh, CME, AR3060. What is a C5 class? Uh, let's go into a classification of X-ray solar flares. Scientists classify solar flares according to their X-ray brightness in the wavelength range from 1 to 8 angstroms. There are three category X class flares are big. They are more major events then can trigger planet-wide radio blackouts and long-lasting long radiation storms. M-class flares are medium-sized. They can cause brief radio blackouts that affect Earth's polar regions. Minor radiation storms sometimes follow an M-class flare. Compared to X and M-class flares, C-class flares are small with few noticeable consequences here on Earth. So the, um, each category for X-flare has nine subdivisions, ranging from C1 to C9, M1 to M9, X1 to X9. It's a logarithmic scale. M1 is 10 times stronger than C1, for example. So uh, we don't expect to have too much trouble with the uh, C5 solar flare coming at us today and tomorrow. I'll leave links below for you for this. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, 
and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.